Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. So today we're going to talk to you about polishing a Crossman um, transfer port, 2240 transfer port, 177 transfer port for the 1377s and so on. Now these guns have a, a little metal transfer port in them that goes between the valve and the breech inlet uh, on your barrel. So there's a transfer port area in there as well. Then of course you got your breech in behind loading your pellets. So for the oldest of you guys that are doing some modifications on your air guns, um, whether you're boring out your transfer port or whatever, um, you're going to need uh, this tool in order to hold the transfer port um, safely, especially when you're polishing it and getting rid of the burrs. Uh, now, if you try deburring this thing with deburring tools um, or sandpaper, you're going to whack it out of shape. You're going to have problems. So even a factory one could use a good polish job. Um, it doesn't hurt, that's for sure. You know, the smoother you can make edges, the better. Um, you know, so it all helps. But um, what you don't want to do is use deburring tools because they'll wreck this thing. Same thing with your barrel inlet. A deburring tool is actually going to wreck the shaping and everything else. So you want to try and find other methods and means to do that. And we're going to talk to you about that as well. So um, first thing you're going to do is you're going to need this tool. Put your transfer port on it. Now this is a stock 2240 transfer port. So if you're boring out your transfer port, you're going to need, again, another tool because you're going to have to have one that holds the board out transfer port because it's going to be too sloppy on here now. This one, this, these tools are made perfect for the 2240 stock transfer port and uh, they don't allow a lot of forgiveness. So, you know, they go on there. It's a nice fit, you know, so it's not going to spin around and jump like crazy. The other advantage is it gives you the area to hold with your fingers when you take it to the polishing machine to polish. So let's take this thing to the polisher and show you how we're going to do this. Okay, now I've got a buffing pad on here. This is a originally it was actually a nice cone shape until I used it up, but um, there's still a little bit of compound on here, so we'll just fire it up. Now again. Pinch the transfer port between your two fingers and just touch it on the buffing wheel. Okay, don't push into it, just touch it on there. And then flip it around. this in my finger at the same time. If the transfer port just wants to sit there and spin, let it spin because it will do the same thing. zoom out and as you can see we've got a nice shiny transfer port now all the edges are good and we've done the sides too now you'll notice that my uh, tool is actually recessed inside because of the length of the transfer port you have to leave that stick out so that you can actually get at that area of the inside of the transfer port with the buffing wheel so you'll want to make sure that when you make your, your length in here on the tool that you uh, accommodate for that. Otherwise it's kind of useless trying to do it. So you'll want to make sure that you've got a little bit of a recess. So, and if you want to know approximate depth here, um, You're looking at about 29 thou, okay? So we got about 29 thousandths the difference in height between the top of the transfer port and the center stem on the holder. Now, if you have a lathe, you can make this tool very, very simple and easy. If you don't have a lathe, well, 
I do make these things so you can order them. And uh, I can make these things in brass and stainless steel. I find the brass ones are actually the nicest ones to work with um, because not every single transfer port is 100% perfectly the same size. So it actually helps to have it made out of brass. And then this way, if you gotta you know, shave just a hair to get it on there, you know, it's not gonna affect anything even across 20 or 30 more transfer ports. So, you know, and it'll self shave itself being brass. Um, whereas the stainless steel is not gonna move for you. Uh, but a tool like this, um, for doing both calibers, you're gonna be looking at about 15 bucks plus, uh, you know, postage and or shipping, depending on how you want it sent. Um, but um, anyway, so you're gonna need this tool, transfer port. Now, if you're boring your transfer port out, I need to know if you're gonna be boring it because then you're gonna need another tool because once you bore this transfer port, it ain't gonna fit where the bean on here. So, and I only bore these transfer ports out to maximum 3.95 millimeter. Um, so I accommodate for those two sizes only. You know, anything below that, it's kind of like, yeah, you know, 3.95 seems to be the optimal, works great. Um, you can also modify your barrel inlet hole uh, as well to 3.95 millimeter, make sure it's the same size or just a slight bit larger. Uh, what you don't want is having your outer hole on your barrel inlet, okay, being um, the, the countersunk part on the inside too big that your um, port's going to actually just drop right in because otherwise no matter what you do here you're going to keep clipping pellets. So you want to make sure that everything is, you know, as proper size proportionally as best as you can. Um, you know, you may actually, in some cases, have to have that inner barrel inlet slightly smaller than the 3.9, um, you know, just because you've got that shoulder edge you've got to deal with. So, and it's still enough that, you know, it's not going to make too much of a spit of difference, um, you know, having just a slightly bit smaller main center hole in your barrel uh, inlet side of your transfer port area, okay? So now this transfer port sits between your valve and your barrel inlet. Now, when we're talking about deburring bur de um, the barrel inlet, especially if you're freshly drilling a new uh, hole in here, you gotta watch the depth. So you gotta go a little bit down, check your transfer port, make sure, because you don't want your transfer port edge, okay? You've got this uh, actually little ring shelf here. You don't want your transfer port going up so it catches um, flush with that. You want it just a slight hair above. So compare it against the factory one before you drill so you know how deep to go. And just a little bit at a time with that main outer hole until you get just the right depth and then you're, you're fine there. You can even pre-test it um, between your breech and your valve to make sure everything seats properly before you uh, do your finishing center hole uh, which is where your main airflow is going to go through. All right, now deburring the inside of your, your area of your breech, because you've now drilled a new hole or you've oversized the hole, um, you want to deburr that. Now, if you're working with um, just oversizing the breech inlet hole to, to make it the same size as this, you've got a little bit of deburring to do. That kind of deburring can be done with just some 400 grit sandpaper and just roll it up and work it inside just like this, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, until you get it as smooth as you can get it. If you're doing a whole fresh cut from a barrel um, where you've chopped the old one off, you're making a whole new one um, type of thing, then uh, you're going to be automatically deburring that inside hole when you start using your cone cutters or cone stones, depending on how you're going to do it. Um, I actually use stones and I go up in sizes, um, but you can use an actual conical cone cutter if you get the right sizes. Um, and it'll automatically deburr most of that already on the inside. So then you just finish it up with some 400 grit and smooth it out. So in order to make sure that's done right, you have to drill your breech inlet first area for where your transfer, per, transfer port goes, then do your inside. Because you have to make that conical shape in here anyway, for your probe to go in and seat in there and lock up with the O-ring, loading your pellet, etc. So you're going to want to uh, clean that up with some sandpaper on the inside. And don't worry if you capture a tiny bit of the rifling, it's not going to hurt anything. So 
you're all fine, you know. But um, so that's how you do that. So polishing, deburring for your barrel, your transfer port, basics on how it's done. Like I said, if you need any of these tools made for you, um, if you don't have a lathe, then I can certainly make these, and I'll make I can make it in a double caliber like this, which is 177 and 22. I can't do any of the 25 caliber stuff because I don't have any transfer ports for that. Um, so I'm only doing 177 and the um, 22 caliber. And of course, um, if you're going to bore your transfer port out larger than the stock diameter on the inside, I'm going to need to know that because that's going to be another tool. And you're looking at 15 bucks a tool. So plus, of course, like I said, postage and shipping, you know, or shipping, whichever way you want to go with it. Shipping at least is insured, you know. Um, but it's up to you um, and there will be a link to our website too in the description of this video uh, where you'll be able to get a hold of me I don't stock these tools because I, I usually don't sell them I don't get asked for them um, but if you need one of these tools that'll be the contact information on my website and how to get a hold of me for that so anyways um, thanks for watching see you in the next video hope uh, this helped out see you again